when it comes to cannabis stocks, I think Planet 13 has been the most requested cannabis stock of them all. And I'm not sure why that is, but I'm pretty sure the reason people want to invest in Planet 13 is because of this chart right here. So this shows cannabis sales in 2022, and you can see the $4 billion in sales for Canada is dwarfed by the $25 billion in legal sales that took place in the United States, which is in turn dwarfed by the $75 billion black market that probably represents the most formidable threat to cannabis investors. Now, we've been looking at cannabis as an investment thesis for quite a while. We have published over 100 research pieces on the topic and also conducted extensive product testing. And what we've found is that if you're going to invest in cannabis, your best bets will be in the large MSOs, what's uh, MSO stands for multi-state operators. And you can see this list here that was put together by key investment partners. So they're a institutional investment firm that we work with to uh, produce content around the reports they generate every year on cannabis. Uh, one of those is coming out rather soon. So you want to subscribe to this channel because the uh, report will come out. I believe it's going to be called Latest Cannabis News, a video that will go over their their latest findings in particular details around the progress being made towards uh, legalization at a federal level. Now, when we look at the list of MSOs that Key has put out here, the top names are the firms that we cover here at Nanalyze. And then towards the bottom of that list are some of the smaller names. And you can see their Planet 13. The first thing to note here is that the revenues are quite small. So you see the likes of Cura Leaf and Green Thumb and True Leaf. They're all generating over a billion dollars in revenues from cannabis while Planet 13 is sitting around a hundred million dollar mark. So when we think about approaches to take when it comes to investing in cannabis, you can buy the entire basket of MSOs and I suppose that's what ETFs do. Instead of paying the fees that an ETF charges, you could just buy that basket. You could try to select a handful of potential winners, so you might choose the larger names among the lot or you can try to cherry pick a winner. Now, if you were going to pick a winner, how might you do that? Well, here at Nanalyze, we like to invest in leaders because leaders can enjoy economies of scale. They're more likely to get uh, access to capital at more favorable terms, and they're going to be able to survive better than smaller companies. So what you want to be careful about in, with cannabis in particular is uh, being aware of domestic bias. So let's say you went to Vegas for vacation or you live in Vegas and you've gone to the Planet 13 mega store, the biggest cannabis store in the world, you thought to yourself, wow, this is a great investment. That's not the approach that you ought to take. You ought to look for companies that have positive operating cash flows, a cash stockpile, and manageable debt. So the latest report from Key really focuses on the need for companies to survive in difficult times. And when we look at Planet 13, here you can see they have, I had to double check this, three operating retail locations. So granted, these are very large stores, but um, that doesn't say a lot for their diversification. If they run into a problem in any one of these retail locations, that's going to spell uh, a lot of trouble for the company. They say here they operate in four states. That's a bit misleading. I think somewhere around 80% of the revenues come from the state of Nevada. There, there are 100 plus dispensaries with their products. So that uh, means we want to take a look at the breakdown between retail and wholesale. They're a small company, a market cap, I think, around $166 million. So we don't invest in firms with a market cap of less than a billion dollars, generally speaking. So this is a rather small firm. You can see here that they've actually opened up a fourth retail location there in Chirac. I hope they have plenty of guards at the entrance there. So um, they are diversifying outside of Nevada. But when you look at the state of Nevada, they talk about wanting to maintain an 8 to 10% share of Nevada cannabis sales. Indeed, they have that. So they, in 2022, realized around $80 million in revenues from Nevada. And when you look at Las Vegas, that accounts for 9% of Nevada's total cannabis sales. So 
that's the uh, primary place that they operate in. They also operate a superstore in Orange County. Here you can see they've had it open for a couple years. There's a 16-foot octopus for anybody that's into that sort of stuff, a waterfall wall, wave floor. They talk about all these expensive gear that... Um, you can go to their store to see a retro hot box van that can't be hot boxed, and of course the universal red ball. These gimmicks are great and all, but um, what we really want to focus on is a company's ability to sell a lot of cannabis at various price points. And when you look at the strategy for Planet 13, it's it's to open these super stores and all tier one markets across the United States are just getting started doing that, and also this neighborhood store concept, which is probably more along the lines of the uh, dispensary that uh, those cannabis aficionados amongst us might visit to buy their weekly uh, eighth. Um, so super stores or neighborhood stores, which concept is better? Um, perhaps if we start at a higher level and think about vertically integrated versus a wholesale producer, and here you can see how they sell cannabis at a retail level and also at a wholesale level. That means they grow the product and then sell it to other people who sell it in retail locations. And we concluded in this piece last year, it's titled Focusing on Vertical Integration in the Cannabis Industry, that the only way multi-state operators can sufficiently displace the black market is they can compete on costs, which can only happen through vertical integration. So some other things to consider here. These large stores in high traffic locations, they consume expensive real estate. Can they make up the difference in volume? And that comes down to looking at profitability. And when we look at that list of MSOs from Key, the top five on that list were all cash flow positive in 2022. Not so much for the Planet 13 numbers here, which you could see at least over the past quarters, trailing 12 months, they've lost about $7 million. We've highlighted their cash balance there. Read that from right to left along the bottom, and you could see that they're consuming cash. So they're not that far away from being cash flow positive, but if they're doing things like opening these, this new cannabis lounge and a Cannabis 2.0 museum and things like this, uh, these are all... Um, cost centers, and, and it's hard to see a, a museum in an uh, expensive real estate location generating a lot of revenue, or how, how much are you really going to sell, how much munchies are you going to sell in a lounge. These entertainment complexes are expensive, and uh, it, it's difficult to see a company trying to conserve cash when they're spending on things like this. When we look at their operations and licenses, so uh, Nevada, they're fully vertical, in two retail locations, California one, of course, that new location they just opened in Illinois, and then Florida. That's an odd place to uh, want to get into. So they talk here about uh, unlimited retail locations and cultivation and production locations. Well, when you look at their books and their financials, you can see here this impairment loss. So that master license that they purchased uh, to operate in Florida uh, for the tune of 55 or $56 million. They wrote off about $40 million of that. So they clearly overpaid for that. And you see them talk about you know, wanting to be one of 22 companies in Florida that's vertically integrated. <laughs> Why would you want to do that? So you have firms like TrueLeave that are quite entrenched already. So uh, their strategy doesn't appear to be overly compelling in some of their past moves. And to be fair, most cannabis companies made a lot of stupid moves when it came to overpaying for licenses and such or acquiring their competitors at very rich prices. So when we look at their income statement to see what they're selling and the gross profit, so this is a good indicator of future profitability. Read that from right to left, and you can see that their gross margins are declining over time. And we see that with other operators as well, but um, that's something that you want to keep an eye on. And when you think about where they're operating, so 80% of their monies are coming from the state of Nevada. Well, here's a breakdown from Key that shows uh, the 2022 sales revenue for some of the major states. You can see there on the left how um, the states like California, Michigan, Colorado, Massachusetts are really dominating, and these, uh, with the exception of California, uh, the small amount, or let's say the 20% at max that Planet 13 is realizing from there, they're largely just dependent on one state. And what's quite interesting here is that 
An NBC report found that 70 to 80 percent of cannabis sold in state legal dispensaries in California was produced and grown illegally. So just going back to that idea of cannabis being a compelling investment theme, I think alongside space, it's definitely the riskiest theme that we cover. So you'll definitely want to think about that before you start uh, putting stacks of Benjamins on uh, cannabis stocks. So when it comes to cherry picking Planet 13, uh, if you're going to try to pick a multi-state operator that's most well-equipped to survive in tough times, it's not Planet 13. Uh, if you're looking for a leader that's selling the most product in the highest number of lo locations in the most uh, prime states, it's definitely not Planet 13. So cannabis is an extremely risky thesis in the best of times. And as an investor, you want to try to minimize your risks whenever possible. So that would not involve uh, investing in Planet 13 stock. Now, we've talked about how vertical integration may be the way forward when thinking about which cannabis stocks that you want to invest in. I'm going to put up a piece here that talks about that. So make sure you give that a watch and subscribe to see our coming piece on uh, the latest in cannabis legalization. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video today.